welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the Argon 1 M.2 case for the Raspberry Pi 4. As the name suggests, this has got an internal M.2 slot to take a SATA M.2 SSD. And it's also got lots of other nice features. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have our Argon 1 M.2, which I purchased for £42 here in the UK, and which sells for about $45 in the United States. So this is therefore a rather expensive Raspberry Pi 4 case, but it does have the uh, M.2 adapter inside it to go from USB to M.2 for the Pi, and it's got other nice features, as I said in the introduction. Let's see if they are worth the price. So, let's bring in Stanley the knife to open this thing up and just go down the back like that. There we are. Get into this nice and easy. And inside we find, hopefully, an Argon 1 M.2 case. Yes, we do. Oh, there's also an instruction leaflet inside the, the box. That's always good to have. But this is the star of the show, the uh, Argon 1 M.2. And uh, as you can see, the uh, case is made of metal, the top is nice and solid, the base is actually a translucent plastic, and the base of this case is actually thicker than the original Argon 1. I've got an original Argon 1 here, which you can see is, is not as tall, and that's because the M.2 SSD goes in the base, and they just have a thicker base, it's jumping around already to accommodate the M.2 SSD. We put the case down like that, we can see on the back we've got this cover panel. And this is a very nice feature. This cover's held in place by magnets, and underneath we've got the GPIO connector, which is colour-coded, and it's got all the pinouts printed on the back of the case. If we take the case apart, and I think I'll first remove this plastic cover like that, we take it apart properly, you'll see that in the two halves of the case, there they are, and let's just take these bits out for a second as well, you see we've got a circuit board in each half. And the Pi plugs into the circuit board in the top half of the case, plugs in via its GPIO connector, so power goes to the Pi via GPIO. There is a power connector on the back of this board, which we use rather than the one directly on the Pi. And then the M.2 SSD plugs into this board here, which is obviously, you can see, in, in the base of the case. And then we have a third board, a little daughter board here, which I took out of shot. This is a marvellous thing. This plugs into the Raspberry Pi 4, into its audio connector and HDMI connectors, and wait for it, gives us two full-size HDMI connectors on the back. It takes all of the connectors to the back of this case, so on the Argon 1 M.2, all the connectors on the back, and the HDMI are full-size. Isn't that an amazing thing? The case also acts as a heat sink. It's got the lugs here, which mean the metal of the case contacts the uh, CPU on the Pi, the SOC, and also the, the memory. And we've also got a little active cooling solution here as well as a 30 millimeter fan, which can be temperature controlled. If we look down the very front of the case, we find this, an IR receiver, so the Pi can be controlled via an infrared remote control. And then we also have this, the jumper, which I'm very pleased to see because we didn't have this jumper on the original Argon 1. And it's associated with the power button because the Argon 1 has got a soft power button for turning the Pi on and doing various other things if you install some software. But if you want the Pi to be turned on purely by using the main adapter and turning that on and off, that's what I would want to do, then you can move this jumper to the other position. So I'm going to leave the jumper where it is, the soft power is activated for now, but for my own personal use, I would switch this jumper to the other position. Finally, lurking in the back of the case right now, we find this stowed away is this USB 3 to USB 3 adapter, which is used to connect the M.2 board to the Raspberry Pi. It's plugged into the back of the Argon 1 M.2. And I wish I'd had one of these adapters available when I was building my ultimate Raspberry Pi 4 rig. And so there we are, all the parts of the Argon 1 M.2 case. And so I think it's now high time we went in search of a Raspberry Pi. Guess what? I found a Raspberry Pi 4, and specifically this one, mounted in my ultimate Raspberry Pi 4 rig with two big brass plates, a 52 Pi ice towel cooler on the top, 
and it's an 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4 and it's set up to boot from an M.2 SATA SSD which is in this case under here and connected in round there. So what I'm going to do is to take the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte model and the M.2 SATA SSD from this rig so we can use them in our Argon 1 M.2 case. And here we are, the Raspberry Pi 4 and the SSD have been released. This is a WD Green 120GB SATA M.2 SSD. And note you could only use a SATA M.2 SSD in the Argon 1 M.2 case. And if you want to know the differences between a SATA and NVMe or PCIe M.2 SSD, look in my recent video explaining SSDs, form factors, interfaces and technologies. Anyway, it's now time to start putting things together. So we'll take that over there for a second and bring in the daughter board, which plugs into the Raspberry Pi. So we'll just put this in here. And so I do like this, it gives us the full size HDMI socket. It just plugs in nice and careful like that. It takes a little bit of force. So make sure you've got it lined up correctly. Don't want to damage anything. That should go in like that. And I think there we are. That's rather neat. And we've now got the full size HDMI connectors on the, the back of the Raspberry Pi. Next, we'll go across to the base of the Argon 1 case so we can fit the M.2 SSD in here. So I'll just remove the retaining screw like this. Hope that comes out like that. And then we can take our M.2 SSD, put it into the slot like that, drop it down into place and replace the retaining screw. So that's a very simple operation our M.2 SSD is now mounted in the Argon 1. Thirdly, we'll go to the top of the case where I've also got out all of the accessories. It came in a little accessory bag. We've got some sticky feet here to go on later. We don't need those for now. We've got a couple of thermal pads. We'll need those in a second. And we've got various screws, specifically four short screws and four long screws. And the next thing we need to do is to put the thermal pads onto the lugs here so we'll provide cooling passively to the pipe. So I'll get on with that. And there we are, I finally succeeded. The tricky bit is getting the backing paper off both sides. And we can now take our Raspberry Pi with its daughter board and fit it into the case. And basically it plugs in, it squashes down here into the GPIO connector. Squashes down, Chris, it connects properly. It squashes down. Basically it goes in like this. Got to make sure everything lines up at the front with the connectors, but hopefully it should go in Okay, we'll just push it down and that's gone in very nicely indeed. So what we now want to do is to put in the short screws, make sure you get the right screws first, the short screws on the inside, avoiding what will be the outside screws for the case. So let's put in the short screws. There we are, I think I put those in the right place. And the final thing we're going to do is to fit the base of the case onto the top of the case. But just before we do that, it's worth pointing out, this is the Pi's micro SD card slot. And this is covered when you put the base of the case onto the Argon 1. You can't get at it, so you have to take the base off to use the, the card slot on the Pi. Now here, we're going to be booting from the M.2 drive. I've already got that set up to boot the Pi from that, so I don't need to put in a micro SD card. But if you do, put it in before you put the base on the case. Anyway, I can now put the base on the case. There we are. And then finally, I just need to put on the sticky feet. There we are, the feet on the bottom are suitably stuck on. And then the very final thing is to take my favorite part of the Argon 1, which is this adapter, and to fit this on the back so that we've got a connection between the M.2 drive and the, the Pi. And this simply uh, drops in like that. And so there we are, that is the Argon 1 all put together. We can still get to the GPIO connector with its lovely little cover on the back. This really is a very, very solid, very high quality unit. As you can probably gather, I really like the uh, Argon 1 M.2 case. Greetings. Here I am back again. I've now got everything connected up to test out the Argon 1 M.2 case, connected up to a monitor and a keyboard and to my 3M ergonomic mouse I always like to use. So let's boot up the Pi, press the switch on the back of the Argon 1 M.2 like that. And I'll show you the whole boot process so you can see how rapidly a Raspberry Pi boots into Raspberry Pi OS from an SSD, which is a pretty quick process, hopefully. 
Now I've said that, it's going to take ages, isn't it? But in theory, it should boot up nice and quickly into Raspberry Pi OS. Yes, we can see the four raspberries there on the screen, and hopefully in a second, we'll arrive on the Raspberry Pi OS desktop. Come on, Pi, you can do it. Let's all encourage it. There we are, at just under 28 seconds. That was a pretty rapid boot into Raspberry Pi OS. And while we're here, let's launch the terminal. Let's just check out the SSD. Let's do an LS. BLK list block devices, see the drives on the system, which are the SSD, that's hardly a surprise, I guess. And let's also run the HD parameters command to check out the read speed of the SSD. I previously installed HD parameters on this Raspberry Pi 4, so let's just run that. Very exciting, see what result we're going to get. Oh, the tension's killing us. What's it gonna be? There we are, 291.22 megabytes a second. And this is not a surprising result, given that the same test on the Ultimate Raspberry Pi 4 rig gave us a result of 293.65 megabytes a second. And the only thing that's changed here is the USB 3.2 M.2 SSD adapter. Clearly the one in use now is the one in the Argon 1 M.2, and it clearly performs as we would expect it to perform. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, the same test for a micro SD card previously gave us a result of 40.92 megabytes a second. So, there we are, there's clearly no problems with the M.2 to USB 3 adapter in the Argon 1 M.2, so let's now move on to check out its cooling performance. Right. Here I am back again, and before we run some temperature tests, I'm going to install the Argon 1 script, which controls the fan and the power button. And to do that, we need to enter this command in the terminal, so let's press enter on that. There we are, this should both download and install the script. And there we are, it's finished, and I think the next thing we need to do is a reboot, which would make sense, so let's just reboot the Pi. And here we are back again. And over here, we've now got some icons for either installing the script or running a configuration program for configuring the fan speed on the Argon 1. And I'm going to use the defaults in the test I'm about to do, but we'll just run this anyway, just to show you what happens when we run up that configuration script. Comes up there, do we want to do this? Yes, we do. And we can now select to either have the fan always on or we can adjust to temperature at 55, 60, and 65 degrees, or we can customize behavior and set exactly what we want in terms of the fan. So I'll just go into a number two to show you the process and adjusting the temperatures like that. And it now says how fast do we want the fan going at 55 degrees C. The default here is 10%, so we'll put that back in. And then at 60 degrees, the default is 55. We'll put that back in again. And at 65, the default is 100%. Fan is going at full pelt. So uh, there we are, that's set up. So I'm now going to run my standard temperature test. And just to show you what that is, if you've not seen it before, let's just go into uh, the Genie Programmer's editor there. And the test is a fairly straightforward bash script. I've installed Sysbench on this Pi. And what this does is to have a little loop, as you can see here. It takes a temperature measurement that uses Sysbench to stress out the Pi CPU by factoring prime numbers to a maximum value of 25,000 keeps going through that loop, giving us a temperature measurement, and it gives us a final temperature measurement on the end. So this runs for about 10 minutes, stressing out the pi, and will give us a range of temperature measurements. So to execute this, we'll just go to a terminal like that, and we'll uh, go to a script, I think it's sitting in like that, and we'll just run the script, there it is, like that, and there's our first temperature measurement, and we'll now speed on through to get a whole set of results. And there we are, it's finished. We have a set of results and they're pretty impressive. As you can see, the Argon 1 M.2 never got to the 55 degree threshold to even turn on its fan during this test. So I'm, I'm very pleased with those results. And let's compare them to various other configurations of Raspberry Pi 4 cooling I've tried on the channel in the past, including a Noctua fan and heatsink combination, a Pimeroni fan shim, the ice tower like I had on my ultimate Raspberry Pi 4 rig, the flirt case, and a Raspberry Pi 4 heatsink case. And if we put results from running the same test on all of these configurations onto a table, you can see the Argon 1 comes out pretty well at the end there. It's not as impressive as an ice tower or my Noctua fan and heatsink combination, but it comes in third after that with some very respectable results.
As we've seen in this video, the Argon 1 M.2 case turns a Raspberry Pi 4 into a very stylish small form factor computer. Now admittedly, the case does cost more than a 2GB Raspberry Pi 4, but if you want to case up your Raspberry Pi 4 with an M.2 SSD in a very nice outer shell, then the Argon 1 M.2 is well worth considering. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.